Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, join us for a story about Dr. Nishi Giefer and her books. Then a story about Huck Boyd and the history behind the Huck Boyd Institute. Next, learn about Fort Scott and their seasonal candlelight tour. And we'll end with a look at Thanksgiving history. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. It must be Wednesday. I'm Frank. I must be Deb. And this is Around Kansas. Thanks for joining us. Around Kansas, of course, is a program that tells you about uh, the people, places, and things that make Kansas a great place to live, work, and play. And I want to give a, a little mention, too. There's so much coming up over the holidays. If there's something you'd like to advertise, just let us know. You can find us on Facebook. Um, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us just about anywhere. Driving down the highway, just wave. <clears throat> hey, hey, I need to put something on the show. All right, we'll stop, won't we, Frank? Work. We'll stop. That'll That's work. right. And our Facebook page, our social media uh, give a shout out once again to Carla Hall, who does such a great job because, like I said, this stuff just shows up. I get up on Wednesday morning, and by golly, we're on TV, and then no time we're on Facebook, and we're all over uh, Twitter, and we're on all these places. <laughs> well, Carla Hall makes that happen. So yeah. God bless you, Carla. So and If it were up to Frank and me, it would not <laughs> 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 It'd just be us, you and us. That's right. It'd just be you and me. Yeah, just An right audience here. of one. That's right. Just, <laughs> just be us right here. So November is winding it's... down. We got Thanksgiving coming up. Yeah. And of course, all the um, stuff that comes with Thanksgiving. You know, one of my fondest Thanksgiving memories is after we'd stuff ourselves um, <laughs> Uh, at my granny's house, we'd go walk in the woods. Mm. And so we'd start thinking about Christmas decorations, and we'd go gather all the stuff in the woods that we would use to make Christmas decorations, like um, uh, pine, you know, like white pine tips, and, and laurel, which uh, we called ivy, but it was actually mountain laurel. And you'd cut mountain laurel stays green all winter. And so you'd cut that and use it for decorations. Running cedar... Um, all these things. We'd take a toe sack with us in the woods, and all of us kids and aunts and uncles, you know, we'd just go walking through the woods, picking up stuff to decorate with and walk <laughs> off that dinner, and then we'd come back and have another piece of sweet potato pie. <laughs> <laughs> so now, sweet potato pie is really a, more of a southern thing instead of pumpkin pie? You know, we had pumpkin pie, too, but mom, mostly just at Thanksgiving because... Apparently that's what Yankees eat, so we decided we'd better try it. But the sweet potato pie is my favorite. And we raised, and this again is in the Blue Ridge Mountains, so it's not like the yams that you go buy in the grocery store here. It's white sweet potatoes. That's what we raised, and that's what we had pies from. So um, another dish that we had was sweet potato sonker. And so a sonker is is specific to the Blue Ridge Mountains or our little section of the um, Appalachian Mountains there. And it's basically, it's similar to a cobbler, but it's uh, fruit with sugar and butter and biscuits on top of it. And then you sprinkle a little sugar on top of it. It's the sonker. Sweet potato sonker that my Aunt Louem made is the food of the gods. I <laughs> I'll never taste anything in my life like it. But I did that at the Topeka Public Library one time when I was doing my Dixie Lee Jackson character. <laughs> we made sweet potato soccer. I ordered sweet potatoes from Mississippi. And the sweet potatoes, the white sweet potatoes came. And gosh, what was that guy's name? But there was a little certificate in there. They were certified weevil-free sweet potatoes. And the, 
the guy who was the head of the Department of Agriculture was a veterinarian, so he had specified these were weevil-free. I saved that little, I think I've still got it, that little certificate <laughs> about I don't think our white sweet potatoes were certified. I don't believe they were. Huh. I don't recall having a bow weevil problem, but um, they, they weren't. We didn't use certified potatoes in my day, Frank. We just used plain old sweet potatoes. But sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie. Sweet tea. You know, if I go, I'll, I'll do that sometime. I promise you, a pumpkin pie, and I swear, I will do some white sweet potato pie. Sometime. That'd be good. Okay. It is dying. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Here we are again. Gosh, November, and it's getting close to being over, too. I know, I know, Frank. <laughs> Next thing you know, you and I are going to be talking about the new year, and we won't even know what year it is. And, huh. Yep. Spring, 4th of July, and then... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it, and then Christmas. And right now, what was it somebody posted? You know, it's like the whole nightmare before Christmas. you got Halloween, Thanksgiving, it, it all rolls into Christmas and New Year's. It's just like, and seriously, that's about the way it is. The end of October yeah. just kind of ushers in that holiday season, and it's just swoom, it's so fast. Yeah. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about with, uh, you know, we did this a little bit last year. We talked about gift ideas, and we want to encourage you, of course, to buy local, you know, support your local merchants, and buy Kansas, of course. There's so many awesome things to buy in Kansas. And support your artists and support your local authors. So, you know, Frank and I are big fans of the Art Walk um, in Topeka, and some of the other communities have... Um, fantastic art walks and today I want to introduce you to another author and that would be Dr. Nishi Giefer and Nishi lives in Wakini and she is a rancher, a farmer and veterinarian and an author of Murder Mysteries and I love this title Doctor of Veterinary and Medicine has been crossed out and Murder has been mm. written in instead. How can you go wrong with a title like that? <laughs> So you're going to love hearing about Nishi, and you're going to love hearing about her books. Veterinarian Nishi Giefer has led the unique life of a farmer and rancher, coping with ever-changing weather and inevitable mechanical breakdowns. She has traveled with a wheat harvest crew, shod horses, poured yards of concrete, built miles of fence, cooked for a family of six plus visitors and hired hands, spent days in the saddle or on a tractor, and has even been bitten by a rattlesnake. Nishi's family hosts an annual ranch production sale promoting red Angus cattle, American quarter horses, and English shepherd dogs. She and her husband are raising four ranch hands who learned the traditional three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic at home, and the other three R's in the corral riding, roping, and wrangling. The kids excel in academics, music, athletics, and ranching, never forgetting to say a prayer of thanksgiving for all the gifts of this world. Always a reader, particularly of westerns and mysteries, Nishi's characters blend both genres in her stories of the American High Plains. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. I'm a patient of Kansas Regenerative Medicine in Manhattan. I had uh, stem cell therapy in my hips and my left knee. My wife and I, uh, both are patients. We went down there the same day in November. Since then, 
Uh, my hips are feeling a lot better. I can, can work now most of the day if I want to. And uh, before, if I, if I worked in the morning, I was done in the afternoon, or if I worked in the afternoon, um, I was sure enough done for the rest of the day. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey Frank, I'm at a loss. You I'm say, at, hello. I'm at a loss We're for words. We're back again. Okay, hello. We're back again. You are again. a loss for words. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, Nobody okay. believes that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've done uh, several stories that really uh, came out of the uh, Huck Boyd Institute over at Kansas State University. And I started thinking there are probably a couple of generations that have uh, no idea who's Huck Boyd. McDill Huck Boyd was uh, another famous Kansan, famous in politics, uh, and an all round regular guy, he really was. And uh, of course, uh, another, another individual who came out of a publishing family. Right. Uh, and mostly in Western Kansas. People in Western Kansas uh, that are watching say, well, we know who Huck Boyd is. We still read the newspapers that his family used to publish out here. Here on the program, we've done several stories uh, developed by the Huck Boyd National Institute for Rural Development and the Huck Boyd National Center for Community Media. Just who was Huck Boyd? Well, Boyd, for decades, was the publisher of the Phillips County Review, a weekly newspaper in his hometown. His parents, Frank W. and Mamie Alexander Boyd, purchased the paper the year he was born. Frank had previously been the editor since 1902 of the Phillips County Post. The couple changed the name of the paper from the Post to the Review. There was considerable competition at that time in sparsely populated Phillips County with four other newspapers in Phillipsburg and other publications in neighboring smaller towns. Huck, the boy's first child, joined the newspaper staff in 1929 as a junior editor when the Great Depression caused him to withdraw from college and return home to help his parents. The Boyd family was deeply involved in the newspaper business. Huck's brother, Bus, given name Frank, after a stellar sports career at Kansas State Agricultural College, now Kansas State University, coached sports for a time, but later became editor of the Jewel County Record in Mankato, Kansas. Nephews and nieces and their descendants of Huck Boyd have also operated the Hill City Times, the Norton Daily Telegram, among Kansas newspapers. Huck Boyd also served at as president of the Kansas Press Association. Fellow Kansas Newspaper Hall of Famer Henry Jameson once said of Boyd, he was that rare kind of guy pulling together and getting things done with a minimum of fuss and fanfare. He never hogs the spotlight. He appears to be in the background, but all the time he's out front calling signals. Huck Boyd was very involved in his community, state, and region as a promoter of business and industry. He played key roles in bringing the first cooperative refinery to Phillipsburg, established the Mid-States Port Authority, which brought and maintained 465 miles of rail line after the Rock Island Railroad went bankrupt in the late 1970s, and obtained legislative approval to solve the small-town doctor shortage in western Kansas by establishing establishing rural family practice residences, an idea later copied in other states. He was a former student and ardent supporter of Kansas State University in Manhattan, which now boasts the Huck Boyd National Institute for Rural Development and the Huck Boyd National Center for Community Media at the A.Q. Miller School of Journalism and Mass Communication. Kansas State also boasts a Huck Boyd Lecture Series, which has brought a number of speakers to the university. 
Boyd was active in Republican politics, twice launching campaigns for governor of Kansas and serving from 1967 to 1987 as a Kansas representative on the Republican National Committee. Both former Sem uh, Senator Robert Dole and current Kansas Senator Pat Roberts have considered Boyd to be a mentor in their political careers. Boyd maintained considerable influence in the state Republican Party as he held almost every role within the leadership structure at one time or another, including state president. Boyd was chairman of media arrangements for the Republican National Conventions in 1968, 72, and 76. And in 1970, he was one of two public members of the United States delegation to the United Nations Economic and Social Council in Geneva, Switzerland. Boyd also served for a time as a member of the chairman of the Kansas Board of Regents, which oversees operations of the six state-funded Regents universities in the state of Kansas. Boyd was widely known and highly regarded in Kansas, both for his journalism career and his involvement in politics and community service. Through the years, he received a number of honors, including awards as Kansan of the Year, the first ever Kansan of the Decade, Distinguished Kansan for Citizenship, Man of the Year for Forestry, and the Kansas State University Alumni Association's Medallion Award. Boyd also received several significant journalism awards. He was honored with the William Allen White Award for Journalistic Merit, the first Victor Murdoch Award for Distinction in Journalism and Community Service, and was a recipient of the Eugene Survey Award for the International Society of Weekly Newspaper Editors for Public Service through Community, uh, community Journalism. Huck Boyd died in January 1987 in Phillipsburg, and he is buried in that city's Fairview Cemetery. MacDill Huck Boyd, Outstanding Kansas. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection, where we showcase my renowned frontier military and Native American artifacts. Behind me you see a touch of fall. We put together not only the beauty of Micah High Walking, who is the first graduate of West Point of the Northern Cheyenne people and a dear friend, but also a Hudson's Bay blanket that I have here in the gallery. The unique opportunity that I was able to have was we unveiled this painting and surprised Micah at Custer Battlefield, a true honor. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Are you on the job again? <laughs> I, I was going to wait her out. So anyway, hi, I'm Frank. She's Deb, I think. And here we are. This is around Kansas. Oh, yeah. You know. Uh, Speaking of meds, I don't think yours have kicked in yet, Frank. Yeah. So, you know, in my brain is the song, Oh Christmas Tree, Oh Christmas Tree. And they're, you know, they're songs about Christmas trees and all that. But how many candlelight songs are there? Huh. Gosh. Candlelight songs. Yeah. I'm sure there's some. I mean, you know, because a lot of candles always creates a mood and all of that. What I'm doing is I'm leading in to her story about candlelights. Fort Scott National Historic Site will celebrate its 175th anniversary by presenting its 36th annual candlelight tour. The theme for this year's candlelight tour is happiness amid hardship. The tour will feature five scenes from the 1840s at Fort Scott, the years that it was an active military fort. Traditionally, the site's candlelight tour has been ghosted, meaning that the reenactors in the scene do not interact with or even recognize the people on the tour. This year, Fort Scott staff is changing things up so that there is some audience participation in most of the scenes. Visitors might join in dancing at the Dragoon Barracks, participate in an evening social at the officers' quarters, or discuss at the Sutler store the reasons why they are going to become Oregon pioneers. During the candlelight tour, over 700 candle lanterns illuminate the site, and over 100 reenactors 
Bring the Fort to Life. This year's tours will be offered December 1st and 2nd. Friday tours begin at 6.30 p.m. and go every 15 minutes until 9 p.m. On Saturday, the tours will run from 5 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. You can purchase tickets by calling or by coming to the Visitor Center at Fort Scott National Historic Site. Be sure to get your tickets early for your choice of tour times, as this event usually sells out. Tickets are $8 each and are non-refundable. Children under 5 are free. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from Historic Lecompton, where Lane University has decorated more than 100 trees with antique and vintage ornaments, transforming the museum with the magic of the season. Open daily through New Year's Day. I'm Scott Thelman, and this is Juniper Hill Farms. Even though my parents weren't farmers, they bought this beautiful farm north of Lawrence in 1999. In 2010, I started growing vegetables on this land. Today, Juniper Hill Farms sells produce to wholesalers, grocers, and restaurants, and is focused on growing high-quality food that everyone can afford. Watch my story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. And we're back again. And we're here on Thanksgiving Eve, so I guess we'll all be going home to peel potatoes <laughs> and, and uh, um, thaw turkeys and... <laughs> You know, all those um, wonderful Thanksgiving traditions that we have, you know, the Norman Rockwell. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what our yeah. thing. How about you, Frank? That's yeah. what our Thanksgiving yeah, looks yeah. like. How about you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, our Thanksgiving now, since we're getting older and our children are getting older, I mean, we still do the turkey. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll do the turkey. And then they do everything else, and then we gather and, and uh, stuff ourselves. When her <laughs> husband died suddenly in 1822, Sarah Josepha Hale found herself and her five children in dire need of a steady income. Friends backed the anonymous publication of a collection of her poetry, and she began to submit stories and poems to literary magazines. Sarah quickly gained the attention and respect of editors of the leading periodicals. Though a prolific writer, she is most remembered for Mary Had a Little Lamb. Asked by a Boston publishing firm to edit the first American magazine written for women, Sarah moved her family from New Hampshire to Boston in 1828. She applied scrupulous editorial standards to the ladies' magazine, accepting only original material and soliciting female writers. When Louis Godey purchased the magazine, she became the editor of Godey's Ladies Book. She moved to Philadelphia and made Godey's the leading American women's literary and fashion periodical for the following four decades. Though not a supporter of women's suffrage because of the corrupting nature of politics, she consistently advocated education, exercise, property rights, and sensible fashion for women. She ardently lobbied to have Thanksgiving recognized as a national holiday. It had been regularly celebrated by different parts of the country, but not uniformly. During the Civil War, Sarah wrote to President Abraham Lincoln, and he delivered. In October 1863, Lincoln declared, I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Sarah passed away at the age of 89 and her body rests in Philadelphia's Laurel Hill Cemetery. She is certainly not forgotten and Carol Lieberman of the Union League Civil War Roundtable 
portrays Sarah at numerous events, including the recent unveiling of an historical marker in her honor. As you sit down to your turkey dinner, sing a round of Mary Had a Little Lamb and toast the remarkable widow, Sarah Josepha Hale. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'm Deb. I'm Frank. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.